I spent dollars on an Edison deck. I wish I'd never heard of this format. What's up guys, we're back with another epic video. Today we're going to be going over my Edison format deck. Yes, this is a format you may have never heard of and boomers, you may like this one. If you are a fan of GOAT format, you hate the new Yu-Gi-Oh! You hate special summoning 500 times, making sure your opponent can't play. You might like this format. But first we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away this Magic Ruler first edition pack. This is light supposedly, so you probably shouldn't open it if you win it, but I'm not totally sure. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, and let me know what you think about Edison format in the comments. As we go through, I'm going to talk about the expensive cards I have and of course, like what the cards do in the deck. The best part about this format is there's not a lot of OTK from what I've experienced. I have a very limited experience. Keep that in mind, but usually you don't lose in one turn. So first off, we have an Armageddon Knight. This is only a super rare. There's not really a high rarity print. There is a Phantom Darkness first edition version, which is like nine bucks. So this card is really nice to use with Dark Arm Dragon because you can manipulate your graveyard by sending a card from your deck to the graveyard. And there's a couple of cards in this deck that you really want to send, such as Destiny Hero Malicious and Plague Spider Zombie, because those cards can be summoned from the graveyard and like do a bunch of crazy stuff. This is a really, really good card. Speaking of darks, we have three Caius the Shadow Monarch. I used to have ultis of this. I sold all of them, one to Simo, like three of them back like in 20. 19 so unfortunately we are with the gold version or else i'd have an even more blinged out deck but this card is just really nice you tribute summon it and then you target a card banish it if it's a dark monster you get to do burn damage it comes up a lot i mean i play three of them because you play treeborn frog in this deck makes better malicious those can also be good tribute fodder for the card and look tribute summons i know all you boomers like tribute summon here's the dark arm dragon i don't have i think i maybe had a phantom darkness version of this at some point i've never had an ulti so maybe if we can get one of those i can throw that in the deck but right now we have the secret rare from legendary collection kai but i think it looks pretty cool if you've never experienced dark arm dragon this card is one of the cards that can kind of go crazy and blow up everything so it, you just special summon it if you have three darks exactly in the graveyard and then you can banish one at a time and start popping cards on their side of the field is 2800 it's a really good card there's a lot of cards to deal with it though so it's not like insane in this format we have a deep sea diva play set so we have a couple of gold letter rares and then an ultra rare from dusa i used to have the turbo pack versions but then they got like a reprint so then people didn't really care about them too much so i sold them this is sort of a weird card because there's only one target besides another diva in this deck so like if you draw that in your first turn it's really frustrating because then you're like well, now I have this D.Va. It doesn't really do much. It is a tuner, which gets you into your extra deck, which there are a lot of synchro cards. This is before XC, so it's only white cards. There's no black cards. There's no pendulum cards. There's no link blue cards, I guess. So you don't have to worry about all that craziness. But Diva's pretty awesome because you just summon it, get Spine Gilman out of the deck, and then you make a level 5 Synchro card, which is like Magical Android, and there's one other one. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Then we've got our two Malicious. This card is very good and also very frustrating. If you draw this card, it's so bad. But if you don't draw it and you can send it to the graveyard somehow, you can banish it from the graveyard and special one from deck. So this is a good way to manipulate your graveyard, a good way to get Tribute Fodder for your Caius, all that stuff. So it's a really, really good card. Plus those Secret Rares are actually like 20 bucks, and they look really nice. Next up, we have an Elemental Hero Stratos. This is not the one we bought for the $1,000 TCG purchase, but this is the other one I got from the collection. We only play one of these in the deck because there's not a ton of elemental heroes, but it's just a really good card. You can search out Malicious, but you probably don't want to do that. There's also a card called Infernal Prodigy that allows you to special summon if you control no monsters, and then you can immediately sack it for Caius. That's one you like to grab sometimes. There's also Elemental Hero Ocean, which I run. This is not a staple in every single deck. I like having this just as another target for Stratos, and if he does stay on the field, he can grab an elemental hero from the graveyard and just grab it back to your hand, so you could get Stratos back which would be pretty crazy and speaking of the infernal prodigies here they are yeah they special summon also if you tribute for a hero monster so like let's say malicious gets stuck in your hand you could special this and then tribute it for malicious and then you would get a draw in the end phase they thought it was too powerful to get a draw right away so like draw in the end phase baby it's still not bad but you could do that to get the malicious out of your hand because you never want malicious in your hand Here's a card. A lot of people don't main deck this. I really like this card because it says no special summons. And then if you set it and it flips up, it can destroy all special summon monsters. And there is a lot of special summoning in the game. It's just not a lot in the same turn. There's a lot of cards that get special summon, like the quick draw synchron deck and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool way to deal with those or to just summon it on the field and just be like, all right, try and special summon now. Then we have that Plague Spreader we were talking about. I need a first edition of this, but a very cool ultimate rare. This card is really awesome because it can put a card from your hand back on top of the deck, which you normally think is a bad thing. But if you do draw like Malicious or something, or you draw uh, like the Spine Gilman and you want it in your deck so you can D.Va. So like, let's say you have D.Va in your hand. You spin the Spine Gilman back to the deck. You summon D.Va. You get to special summon it from deck. If it's in your hand, you don't get to do that. 
So that's just added benefit. Plus, this gets the special summon itself out. It's a tuner. That's good for synchro plays. That's just a crazy card in the deck. Plus, it's a dark for Dark Arm Dragon. Then we have the Turbo Pack Sangan. Sangan, obviously, an, an amazing card. This was before it got errata, too. So it was still insane at that point. Awesome dark monster, plus just advantage every time it's destroyed. Here's the most frustrating card of the deck. I always seem to draw this Spined Gilman. Because it's a Sea Servant and it's level 3 or less, it can be summoned by D.Va. I always seem to draw it. You just want to keep it in the deck. Stay in the deck so D.Va can summon and special summon you. But somehow, you always end up drawing it. Here's a really nice looking card, a Treeborn Frog. We got this out of the collection the other day. I had an unlimited version, replaced it with a first edition, which is way more expensive, by the way. I did not realize how much these are. But this card is awesome because you use Future Fusion in this deck. This was before it got eroded. You activate Future Fusion, you send Malicious, you send this card. You immediately have this online. Well, you don't immediately because you have to wait for Future Fusion to go away, but you have this in the graveyard, then you have Malicious in the graveyard. It's insane. This card can come back literally every turn if you don't control any spell and traps, and then you can just sack it for Kaius. You can do that three turns in a row if you wanted to. And we got the old brain control. Obviously, that card steals face up monsters really good. You just steal it, you tribute it off for Caius or whatever. Then there's the one of future fusion. As I mentioned earlier, crazy. You just send the cards you want to the graveyard. That gets you an absolute zero, which is like the win condition of the deck. We will talk about that card later. It is insane. Heavy Storm is legal. Yeah, so it's very goat format like. You got Heavy Storm still. It's only at one, thankfully, because that would be too much if it wasn't. Here's one of the best cards in the deck, Miracle Fusion. If you were to max this deck out, guys, like this deck could be like way more than goat format. It's crazy. Miracle Fusion, this this comes in ultimate rare, so it's it's a lot, but this is an awesome card. Gets you out absolute zero. Also, you could play the Gaia, which I do play that actually, so it's another option for that. Mystical Space Typhoon, no explanation needed, but that is the ghost rare. I do have an ultimate rare. I think the ghost just looks better, so that's the one I have. Then we've got ourselves a collector rare Rota. This can search out both Stratos and Armageddon Knight. You can decide which way you want to go with your plays right off the bat. Kind of gives you some options, which is pretty cool. Then Smashing Round, we actually pulled this out of Champion Pack too, so that's pretty cool. Pretty expensive card, very nice card. You just destroy a monster on the field with the lowest defense. Highest defense is a different there. Three upstarts. This card's pretty nice. If you need to draw, you know, just keep drawing a little bit. It does give them life points, which is a little bit iffy sometimes, but still a really nice card. Into the traps, we have a couple of bottomless. We never pulled the champion pack version, but just an amazing card when they summon something really good, like a Caius or something. You're like, sorry, bottomless. Then we have the legendary Mirror Force Secret Rare. This is a very, very nice card. It's not incredible though, because Caius can just hit it and banish it before it attacks. Still really amazing though when it goes off. Here's one that I play more of than most people. I play three Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. This card is just really, really good. If you do have a Malicious stuck in your hand, you pitch the Malicious. That gets the advantage going. Plus, you get to spin a card to the top of the deck. It blanks a draw. They basically lose like a battle phase usually. It's just really, really good. Like, it's insane, especially if they're playing Absolute Zero. Because if you remove the Absolute Zero to the extra deck, then it doesn't activate its effect of leaving the field where it destroys all your monsters. This actually doesn't count according to what I've heard and read. That makes it even better. Three more traps. We have a Solemn Judgment card. I think was at one at that point. Just insane because it can negate so much stuff. It's just really, really good. Then we have a Torrential Tribute. If they get crazy summoning, this was at one. So you can uh, pop their whole board, including your own, but still really good reactive card. And then a Dust Tornado for back row. Now we can get into the extra deck and the side deck. For the extra deck, everyone is playing this card. So basically, if they have a Cyber Dragon or they have a machine deck, you play your own Cyber Dragon in the side deck. You just summon it and you can just make it into this card. So they have a big like Cyber Dragon or a monster out there. You just can contact Fusion it off, which is just ridiculously unfair for those Cyber Dragon decks, I feel like. So everyone's siding that in. So nobody's playing Cyber Dragon or Machine. <laughs> then the win condition of the deck, absolute zero. This is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's literally crazy. This card is ridiculously dumb because if you summon it out and they remove it from the field so it's banished or if it goes to the graveyard, it Raigeki's their field on their own turn. So if they like do something to actually get rid of this card besides flipping it face down, I think I think they would have to flip it face down then remove it. Or There's a couple of ways to avoid it. But if you don't do those, like let's say you just attack into it or you like smashing ground it or something, they have to lose all their monsters. So it's insane. So if you play it slow, like trickle out the absolute zeros, it's so hard for them to get around them without destroying like everything they have. Then here's one that not everyone plays, Elements of Hero Guy. I've never actually summoned this in the limited amount that I've played, so I don't know if it's worth it or not, but it's just another option for Miracle Fusion, and also Future Fusion if you want to send directly from deck. Then we have an Ally of Justice Catastore, another nice, this is a five that you can go into with D.Va. So you D.Va, you get your Spine Gilman from deck, you Synchro right into this, and it can destroy any monster that is a non-dark monster automatically, which is a pretty crazy effect. Then we have the beautiful Ghost Rare Black Rose Dragon. This card is a Synchro 7, so if you can get this guy out, you can blow up the entire field. Pretty good if you ever need to do it. Like, let's say they just have a ton of cards in the field and you're just like, I gotta get rid of these. Synchro and a Black Rose and just priority. By the way, priority is still a thing in this, which I kind of hate priority.
priority, but still fun in this format. So you just priority Black Rose, blow up everything. And we can't have one ghost without another. We have Stardust Dragon. This card actually is pretty dang good in this. They try and Mirror Force you, Stardust. They try and uh, Smash and Ground you, Stardust. They try and do anything like that, activate the effect. It's going to come back. It's just crazy good. It looks amazing. So many reasons to play Stardust. Then another Synchro. We got the Brianak. Actually a pretty awesome card. If you can get into a six and they have something problematic, you can just discard a card. Let's say you have a card you don't want, like a Malicious or a Plague Spreader. Discard it. You can send that card back to the hand or back to the extra deck in a lot of cases. So like absolute zero. Pretty good against that. It's a really nice card. Also a DT version, which is pretty expensive. Then we have the Colossal Fighter. This guy's pretty crazy because he gets pretty big. And if he's destroyed by battle, he can target himself and bring himself back, which is just a little bit broken. Pretty crazy. Uh, just another big guy that you can go into. Then there's a Darkened Dragon. Here's what I was talking about. This deck can be really expensive. If you go with Shonen Jump version, this would be a few thousand dollars just for this one card. Not that it's even that good in the deck. It's just an option as a seven and eight, I should say. But that's just hilarious. You can make the deck that expensive. Here's one that I really like. The Goyo Guardian. How is this a Synchro 6? I don't know, because when it destroys a monster, specials onto your side of the field. Insane. This is also first edition Duelist Genesis. Pretty amazing card and also just looks beautiful. I love that card. I've had many trials and tribulations. We have Magical Android. This is your other Synchro 5 that you can go into with Diva. I didn't have one of these, so I bought one. First edition. Then I realized I already had one. I found it in a box. Then we pulled one the other day in the video. So a lot of issues. I keep getting this. I now have three. I needed one. It's not a great great card, but it is a single five with a big attack and you also gain life points every turn that it's on the field. So not terrible, I guess. And then finally two cards that I don't have, but we have the Chicolates to take their place. So we have an armory arm here. I did order one. So it's on the way. The Chicolates is holding strong, holding their place. So we love to see those armory arm is a synchro four. So it's the only four in the deck. Then we have a Mistworm. I have no idea what this card's for, to be honest, but it's in every deck list. I, if you guys know and you're Edison experts watching this, let me know. Why do you play the Mistworm? Finally, we have the side deck. We have Cyber Dragon Ultimate rares as you as i mentioned before if you want to make that cyber dragon guy all you do is special summon this and you contact fuse with their machine kind of dirty so there's two of these in like every single side deck here are more shonen jump prize cards that you could play doom caliber knight not one but two so if we max this deck out and we had two doom cows we had a dark end dragon this deck would be like i don't know 60 70 thousand dollars something insane like that so that would be even more than a goat format deck maybe goat format could find a way to edge it out in the max rarity here's a fog king this is another one everyone's playing not really sure why uh if you know you're an edison format person let me know why Fog King's played. Here's another Fossil Dyna. You love to see this card. Just a really nice card. Spe stopping people from special summoning is always good. It's always been good pretty much, except maybe in like 2002. Then we have the Gores. This is the one that we got out of that blister. It's super faded. It looks really cool. Gores is just a crazy card because they attack directly when you have no cards. You get to bring this guy out plus a token for the damage they did. So you get a 2,700 guy plus like if they did 2,000, you got a 2,000 guy. Really awesome card. You got a couple of Thunder King Ryo, another guy that doesn't let you special summon. He can decide when to do it though. It's only one time he has attributed himself and negate it. A little bit worse than Dinah in that regard, but also it's 1900, which is huge. So then we've got two of those. We've got a couple more Dust Tornadoes if they do have a ton of back row, so we can do that. Pulling the rug because Monarchs and like Caius especially is super prevalent in this format. So two of those. Then a Starlight Road. All they have to do is activate a card to destroy a monster you control and you automatically get Stardust Dragon from your extra deck. So that's pretty awesome. And then a Trap Dust Shoot. I don't like running this in the main deck because if you do happen to go second, sometimes it doesn't really come up. So it's a cool card. Pretty nice side deck there. I don't know what our total value was on this deck. Check it out. I'll pop it up. But I found out about this format and I have way too much money invested in it already because I love it. I think it's actually more fun than GOAT. I know I said it. I said it. So if you're a GOAT purist and you hate like other formats and new format, you guys should try this. I'm telling you, maybe get on Dueling Book because you can play it there. You don't have to spend a lot of money like I did. Try this out. It's actually a ton of fun. I think I'm going to be doing a stream where we actually try and play it. If you guys want to see something like that, let me know down below and I'll play a lot of you guys. We can like learn how to play it together, etc. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more epic content. Shout out to TCG Trust Cards. Don't Info Show, Tomato Juice, Stanley Might, Nance, Mimic Gecko, Smack McFarlane, G Raider, Daxter, Ian Musa, and Junior Barding. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.